I was drinking in a pub when two large women took a seat beside me. Hearing them talk I decided to compliment their accent. Beautiful accent ladies. Are you from Scotland? One of them answered, Wales, you idiot. So are you Wales from Scotland? I don't remember much after that. <laughs> an adventurer travels through the jungle and is suddenly confronted by an unusual sight, fallen trees and trampled vegetation as if something gigantic has forced its way through. He decides to investigate. After walking for a few minutes, he sees a dead elephant lying on its side and a pygmy jumping up and down with excitement on top of the fallen elephant. The adventurer inquires as to what is going on. The elephant, sir, explains the pygmy. The elephant has gone mad. Tis terrible. Elephants are wise and friendly, but when an elephant goes mad, it destroys everything in its path. It cannot be reasoned with, no sir, and it cannot be helped in any way. Unfortunately, when it happens, the elephant has to be put down. The adventurer inquires, but how did you kill such a gigantic animal? I killed it with a club, helpfully explains the pygmy. It must have been a big club, observes the adventurer. <laughs> a man walks into a pottery shop. Walks into a bar. A man walks into a pottery shop and plunks a live duck on the counter. Confused, the shopkeeper asks, hello, can I help you? The man then replies, any chance you can fix this, it's quacked. <laughs> a blonde walks into the library. She walks up to the counter, slams a book down and screams at the librarian, this is the worst book I've ever read. It has no plot and far too many characters. The librarian looks up and calmly remarks, so, you're the one who took our phone book. <laughs> there were these two blondes and they locked their keys in their car. The one blonde says to the other, what do we do? Do we get a coat hanger and pick the lock? The other one replied, no, people will think we're trying to break in. The other one said, well do we get a knife and cut the rubber and pop the lock? The other one answered, no, people will think we're too suet to use the coat hanger. The other one said, well we better think of something quick because it's starting to rain and the sunroof is open. <laughs> a man was stopped at a checkpoint on the way home from a visit to Mexico. The blonde border guard said, get out of the car and open the trunk. The traveler replied, I'm sorry, but the handbrake on the car is broken. I can't take my foot off the brake or it'll roll backwards. The guard, do you take me for a fool? That won't keep me from inspecting things. He gets into the car himself, in the passenger's seat, and applies the brake himself. Now, he says, that takes care of that, now go and open the trunk. So the traveler complies and opens the trunk of the car. Now, shouts the guard from inside the car, are there any drugs or contraband in there? A blonde was visiting Washington, D.C., for the first time and wanted to see the Capitol building. Unfortunately, she was having trouble finding it. Finally, she saw a police officer and asked him for directions. Well, if you wait at that bus stop right there and get on the 54, it will take you right there, explained the officers. Thank you as she cooed and walked to the bus stop. Five hours later, the police officer was driving by again, and sure enough, the blonde was still standing at the bus stop. The officer stopped and said, Excuse me miss, but I told you that to get to the Capitol building, you take the number 54 and it will take you right there. What are you still doing here? Oh don't worry officer, she replied. It won't be long now. The 47th bus just went by. A circus owner runs an ad for a lion tamer and two young people show up. One is a good-looking lad in his mid-twenties and the other is a gorgeous blonde about the same age. The circus owner tells them, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is one ferocious lion. He ate my last tamer so you guys better be good or your history. Here's your equipment, chair, whip and a gun. Who wants to try out first? The girl says. I'll go first. She walks past the chair, the whip and the gun and steps right into the lion's cage. The lion starts to snarl and pant and begins to charge her. 
About halfway there, she throws open her coat revealing her beautiful body. The lion stops dead in his tracks, sheepishly crawls up to her and starts licking her ankles. He continues to lee her calves, kisses them and rests his head at her feet. The circus owner's mouth is on the floor. He says. I've never seen a display like that in my life, he then turns to the young man and asks, can you top that? The young man replies. No problem, just get that lion out of the way. <laughs> I walked into a coffee shop, the original joke has a bar, and I saw a man with a big orange head. I went to the barista and said, say, what's with the guy with the big orange head? The barista said, buy him a coffee and maybe he'll tell you his story. So I went up to the man with the big orange head, coffee in hand, and he said, I bet you want to hear about how I got the big orange head, huh? I said, yes, if you don't mind. He said, well, let me tell you, I was walking along the beach and I saw a lamp. I rubbed the lamp and a genie came out and said I could have three wishes. For my first wish, I wished for money, and money rained from the sky and I was rich. For my second wish, I wished for love and a beautiful woman emerged from the ocean and we were married immediately. I looked at the man with the big orange head and said, I don't get it. What's with the big orange head? The man with the big orange head sighed and said, well, that's where I went wrong. For my third wish, I wished for a big orange head. <laughs> a woman wanted to know how her husband would react if she left him. She wrote him a letter saying she is tired of him and didn't want to live with him anymore. She put it on the table in the bedroom and then climbed under the bed to hide until her husband got home. When he eventually came back home, he saw the letter on the table and read it. After a few moments of silence, he picked up the pen and added something to the letter. Then he started to get changed, whistling happy tunes and singing and dancing while he did so. He grabbed his phone and dialed a number. His wife listened from under the bed as he started chatting to someone. Hey, babe, I'm just changing clothes and then I will join you, he said. As for the other fool, it finally dawned on her that I was fooling around on her and she left. I was really wrong to have married her, I wish you and I had met earlier. See you soon, honey. Then he hung up and walked out of the room. Heartbroken, she climbed out from under the bed and stumbled over to read what her unfaithful husband had written on the end of her letter. Through teary eyes, she read, I could see your feet you idiot, I am going out to buy bread. <laughs> well, says the boss, if I hire you guys, you have to promise to not eat any of our staff. The cannibals promise that they will not eat anyone and get hired. Everything is going well for a while, and one day the boss calls them into his office. You're working well and all, but we're missing an office cleaner. Do you have something to do with that? The cannibals swear that they are innocent. The boss believes them and leaves the office and they all turn to their leader. You idiots, he screams. Who ate the cleaner? One of the cannibals sheepishly raises his hand. You fool, shouts the leader. For weeks we've been feasting on directors, team leaders, project managers, and human resource staff, and then you go and eat someone they'll actually miss. <laughs> hey, there, I put a lot effort into making these videos so please subscribe for more jokes and stay happy.